Hi, I'm Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Photoshop CS4 Sneak Peek. Today, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite Photoshop technologies, and that is Smart Objects. Smart Objects open up all sorts of features, and in CS4, they fixed a couple of my pet peeves. Let's see how they work. So we're going to go ahead here and actually convert this to a smart object. A simple right click and we could say convert to smart object. Now one of the main advantages of a smart object is that you could change the object's scale and it still preserves all of its information. For example here we can go ahead and scale this all the way down. And if we were to then scale it back up, you would actually see that it still preserves the information. So that works great. Let's just go ahead and reset it there. Smart objects are going to give you a lot of flexibility as you design because you could choose to scale and rotate a photo without having to worry about actually discarding the pixels in between. It gives you a lot of flexibility. Now let's go ahead and add a layer mask to this image here. I've already made an alpha channel for the fire hydrant and we're going to add a layer mask to the smart object. Notice here something important. There's an actual chain icon connecting the mask to the smart object. Now, those of you used to layer masks are saying, what's the big deal? Isn't there always a link there between the mask and the layer? Well, on regular layers there were, but under Photoshop CS3, no such luck. When you used layer masks with smart objects, they didn't stay connected together. So you couldn't actually move the object once it was a smart object or else the mask wouldn't work. That is now fixed, which is absolutely huge because it gives you flexibility in both your scale and position and with your transparency. Let's see. Let's go ahead and scale this down just a bit. And then we'll change our mind and scale it back up. And you see that it scales just fine. Now, if you scale it down really far, keep in mind that the layer mask itself is not a smart object. So it could get a little bit pixelated around the edges of the layer mask, but still great flexibility. Another great thing here is that we have more options with the smart object. So when we do Command T for free transform, you'll see that we can do all sorts of things now, like perspective changes, pulling that in to get a little bit of an angle, or we can actually do a free distort, moving the corners however we need to to warp the object. And in fact, you actually have a real warp. So you can go ahead and do a 3D warp on the object, bending it using it as you need to here, or making general changes using the warp here, such as arcs or lower, pushing it as you need to, using custom, all in all, very, very flexible. So the cool thing here is that anything you could do on a regular layer can now be done most of the time on a smart object, which is going to give you great flexibility as you design. Let's take a look at a few more uses. So here we have an image trapped inside of a shape you'll notice that we have a glass texture on top and we have this fake newspaper inside. One of the advantages of the smart object is that it's easy to swap things out. So if you needed to change the contents here to a different newspaper or a different object, no big deal. Let's go ahead and make this flexible. First off, I'm going to throw away the mask and get rid of that and make this a smart object. Now that I have a smart object, we can add the mask back on. Now I did that so the mask was not part of the smart object. That way the smart object contents could be easily modified. Keeping the mask outside of the smart object means that the smart object exists on its own and then it's masked. You'll see how that works. With the smart object layer selected, we could choose layer, smart objects, replace contents. We can now navigate to a new image and choose place and once we set it, it's going to drop it right in there. There we go. In this case, I'm going to uncheck the link icon and select just the smart object layer and press Command T for free transform and Command 0 to zoom out. Notice that we can now easily scale the content of that smart object, putting a different item inside of that box. There we go. Let's try that one more time. Layer, Smart Objects, Replace Contents. And we'll grab another photo and click Place. Grab it, drop it in, 
and it does a swap. We could easily reposition it within that space. So the advantage here with smart objects is not just that they give you great flexibility for scaling and such, but you could use these to easily swap out. So in this example, let's say the newspaper wanted to keep swapping out the headline and dropping it inside the newspaper stand. Every day, they could just replace the smart object with another image that was the same size, and it would preserve that scale and just keep updating. That sort of flexibility is fantastic. Plus, when using smart objects, you actually get smart filters, which are completely non-destructive. Here's how they work. So once you have an image open, you just go ahead and right click on it and convert it to a smart object. Then you could start to stack on filters. For example, we can add a Gaussian blur filter and crank up its value. If we were to change its mind, no big deal. We could simply double click on Gaussian blur and modify that filter. The results of the filter are totally live, so even after closing and saving the document, when you reopen it, you could change it. But not only can you adjust the amount or the settings for the filters, you can also double click on this double arrow here and adjust the blending properties. This allows you to change things like set the mode to soft light and adjust the opacity. And you'll see there we have a nice intensification of the color with a little bit of a pro mist effect. We could toggle that off and on as needed. We can also do things like apply a sketch filter. And run that on the image. Or switch to another one up here as we see fit. And when we click OK, that has its own blending mode option available. So we can play with that and how it mixes in with the object below. That's kind of nice. And what's cool here is we can actually change the stacking order. So the chalk and charcoal filter runs first, and then the Gaussian and blur runs afterwards. And let's change that to a nice multiply mode so it actually makes the image a little darker. Plus, at any point in time, if you want to restore detail, you can click on the smart filter mask here, grab your paintbrush, and paint in with black, and it will actually mask the details of those filters and restore the original part of the image, giving you the ability to control what parts of the image are filtered and what parts are not. Now, those smart filters were there back in CS3, but so many people missed them, I felt guilty not showing them to you today. With the improvements that we now have with smart objects, including great flexibility for designing, filtering, scaling, and transforming, you have no reason not to make them a regular part of your workflow. Be sure to fully explore the Smart Objects menu under Layer. With Smart Objects, we have the ability to not only convert smart objects, but also make copies of objects and turn them into smart objects, rasterize them, export them, replace them, or even edit them. And remember, Smart Objects also work great with vector source material, preserving free transform with all the vector capabilities built right into Photoshop. That's it for this episode of Photoshop CS4 Sneak Peek. I'm your host, Rich Harrington. We've got a lot of cool things that you can check out over at our website at cs4.com. That's csfour.com. We've got a great contest going with prizes that you can win, as well as all of the other episodes in the training series. So be sure to check that out. If you'd like to learn more about Photoshop on a regular basis, we have some ongoing podcast series you might be interested in. The first is called Understanding Adobe Photoshop. You can find out about it at rastervector.com. It's for general interest Photoshop enthusiasts, digital photographers, graphic designers, web folks. As far as those of you working in video and motion graphics, you're going to want to check out our other series, Photoshop for Video, and its blog at photoshopforvideo.com. So I hope you enjoyed it. This is Rich Harrington, and tune into our other episodes. Thanks.